Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew in chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. We heard some good messages, messages here already. Brother Sissel preached to us. Brother uh, Bankston preached to us. Brother Eastridge preached to us. And it was all good. Hey Amen. There's meat on the table. Hey Amen. There's pork chops in one plate and roast beef in the other and T-bones on another platter. Hey Amen. The, the table is spread with meat. Hey Amen. Matthew chapter 11, starting at verse 2. It says, Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. And the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And I'd like to preach to you this afternoon about a faith to die by. Of faith to die by. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray, God, for your spirit to have its way in this place. We pray, God, for the Holy Ghost to move on every heart, uh, every mind, uh, every soul here in this building today. We pray, God, that you would open up our understanding of the Scriptures, open up our eyes to your Word. Uh, we pray, God, that you would minister to each one of our needs here. Bring us ever closer to you. Bring us all into your salvation. Everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It says here in my text, Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John was in prison. John was in a tough situation. He was in a hard place. Uh, he was in the prison house... Uh, of Herod, and I don't know much about the kinds of prisons they had back in those days, uh, but I do know a little bit about the kinds of prisons they have today. <clears throat> and uh, I spent four years locked up, three of that in prison, and uh, I spent that time in two different prisons. And, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter to me what people say they talk about, oh, well, they've got television, and they've got racquetball, and they've got weight sets, uh, and, and they've got all of these things uh, uh, to help them pass their time. Friend, the, pr the prison I was in had all those things, uh, and it was still hard time. I didn't like it. Uh, I didn't want to be there. When those doors closed at night, uh, the bars closed, uh, and the lock slammed shut, and you laid your head down on that plastic pillow, and it all got quiet, uh, friend, you knew you was all alone in that place. Uh, amen. You know, you can be lonely in a crowd. Uh, you can be the loneliest person in the world in a crowd full of people. And doing time is lonely time. Doesn't matter if there's a thousand other inmates uh, there. Doesn't matter if there are guards there. Doing time, as far as I was concerned, was no fun at all. And we had all of the modern uh, 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 things that they have today with the electricity, and we had the food, uh, and we had the, the clothing, uh, and, and we had our civil rights. Uh, they couldn't take us in the back room and chain us to the floor and beat us with batons. Uh, at least they weren't supposed to. Amen. But uh, this prison that John found himself in, it wasn't like the prison I was in. Uh, 
Amen. They didn't have central air. It wasn't cool in the summertime. Uh, amen. They didn't have central heat. Uh, it wasn't warm in the wintertime. Uh, amen. They didn't have the kind of cooking facilities uh, that they have in the modern prisons today. Uh, they probably came in and slopped it right on the floor to the prisoners. Uh, and whoever was big and bad enough to eat it could. Uh, and if you wasn't big enough to get your plate full, then you didn't get to eat. Uh, that's right, they still did that in the prison I was in. Some of those guys, six foot tall, 300 pounds, twisted steel, they just walk up to somebody's table and take their pork chop right off their plate. And if you wasn't big enough to get up and get your pork chop back, you was going to bed hungry. You can tell I didn't go to bed hungry. I gained weight when I was in prison. <clears throat> but John wasn't in that kind of a situation. I imagine that the prison he was in was a hard place to be in. Uh, I imagine that the guards uh, that were over him were hard men, uh, hard taskmasters. Uh, I imagine uh, that it was cold when it was cold and it was hot when it was hot. Uh, I imagine he went to bed hungry more often uh, than not. Uh, I imagine that there were chains probably fastened to his hands uh, and fastened to his feet uh, at all times. Uh, I imagine that he may have even been chained to the floor in the mess uh, and the muck and the excrement of the other prisoners uh, they were chained to the floor next to him. I imagine there were lice and maybe ticks and vermin and rats and all kinds of infestations and sickness and disease rampant in that dark, dank place that John found himself in. I just want you to know, John didn't like the prison house. He didn't like where he was. He didn't like being in that place. It didn't, it didn't agree with him at all. He was locked up in the prison house. And as he was locked there in that prison house, I believe John was a praying man. And I believe that he started praying. God, get me out of here. God, you know, I was witnessing for you. You know, I was I was preaching repentance down by the Jordan. Uh, man, we baptized all kinds of people in the Jordan. Uh, even them fellas that came down from Ephesus. Uh, hey, man, we baptized them and sent them on their way. Uh, and, and we were, well, you know, I was preaching. I've been preaching to the Pharisees. Uh, hey, man, and told them to come back uh, when they were ready to show their repentance. Uh, hey, man, uh, come, come on, Lord. Uh, you got to get me out of here. I was doing a good work for you out there. And, and, and I don't like this place and I'm going to get sick and I'm going to die in this place you got to get me out of here God and the days went by and the weeks went by I don't know how long John was in the prison house but I believe that he was calling on God Amen. and for some reason he wasn't feeling like he was getting an answer for some reason all he could feel was the chains on his wrist all he could feel was the mud on his back all he could feel were the beatings he may have been receiving uh, and he wasn't hearing from God uh, and he wasn't feeling the presence of God in that place uh, because uh, he began uh, to question uh, whether or not uh, he was serving God uh, right or not. John the Baptist began to question in his mind. Amen. It was so hard. It was so cold. He was so hungry. He was hurting so bad. He was praying. He may have been praying silently. He may have been calling out on God at the top of his lungs. Maybe every prisoner in the house heard him. God, where are you? God, I need you. God, you've got to get me out of this place. And his voice echoed off the walls and off the ceiling and down the chambers. And maybe the other prisoners hollered back, Hey, shut up! Hey, we got a tough two, preacher. John began to wonder. John began to think in his mind. John began to question. It says, Now when John heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto them, Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? John 
had begun to question in his mind whether Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh or not. Now, John was Jesus' cousin. Six months removed. John and Jesus probably grew up together. The Scriptures are silent about uh, uh, Jesus in the years uh, that He grew up uh, for the most part. But if you could talk to John, he could probably tell you some stories about Jesus. And they probably got together at family gatherings. And they may have got together at the Jewish holidays. uh, And they may have got together at so-and-so's birthday. uh, And John knew who Jesus was. Uh, He grew up with Jesus. He was a family member in Jesus' household. Uh, Amen. Uh, And then somehow, somewhere in his life, uh, God got a hold of John uh, and sent him out into the wilderness. Uh, And he said, go out into the wilderness. Uh, I want to have a talk with you. And he began to talk to John. Now, you understand he prepared John to be able to prepare the way for Christ. Amen. And, and, and he began to prepare John for those things. And he began to get John ready to prepare the way for Christ. And one day, well, John was down at the Jordan baptizing people. Amen. Under the baptism of repentance, he saw Jesus coming down the way. And he turned to his disciples and said, Behold, the Lamb of of God uh, that taken away uh, the sins uh, of the world. John already knew who Jesus was. Amen. He'd already heard the stories. Uh, he'd heard uh, about his own miraculous birth. Uh, he'd heard, uh, amen, how Mary came to his mother and how he left in the womb uh, when she came into his presence. Uh, amen. Uh, he heard all of the stories. He knew all the stories. Amen. Amen. And then he baptized Jesus in the Jordan. And God gave John a sign. Amen. That sign was for John. It wasn't for everybody else standing around wondering what was going on. The Holy Ghost came down like a dove. Amen. And it was for John's benefit. Amen. And John saw that. It was a manifestation from God. Amen. And it was a confirmation. John, uh, I know you've been told. Uh, John, uh, I know we showed you these things. Uh, John, I know you grew up with Jesus. uh, But let it be beyond any doubt in your mind uh, that this Jesus uh, is the Christ. Uh, This Jesus uh, is the Messiah. This Jesus uh, is God manifest in the flesh. Uh, Just so you don't have any question in your mind, John, let me show you something and the dove came down and lighted upon Jesus and John knew at that moment this is it this is him but those days seemed like a long time ago to John now those those things that happened seemed just like stories out of a picture book Because now John's in a dark place and a cold place, uh, and he's hungry and he's beaten and he's chained. And now he's, no doubt, he's run those things to his mind a hundred times. He's played them back a hundred times. He's asking himself, Did I really see that dove or not? Did I really see that dove or not? Because I'm stuck in this place uh, of no return. I'm stuck in a place uh, where I may never see daylight again. I'm stuck in a place uh, where they might call upon uh, my life. I may never get out again. I might have to die. I might die in this place. I've got to know once and for all. I've got to get it settled down in my heart. Is Jesus Christ the Messiah or not? Stories filtered into the prison house about the miracles that Jesus was performing. And when some of John's disciples came and began to tell him that Jesus was opening the blind eyes and unstopping the deaf ears and calling Lazarus forth from the grave, John knew that it was a moment of reckoning. It was a moment of truth in his life. And he asked his disciples, he said, you've got to go to him and you've got to ask him for me. I don't know if I'll get out of here alive, uh, but you got to ask him for him. Uh, just ask him one thing. Are you the one? 
Are you really the one, Jesus? Because uh, we ain't playing patty cake no more. Hey, man, we ain't playing games no more. I'm in prison now. I'm chained up now. I hear that chopping block going all day long every day. Uh, they took the guy to the cell next to me yesterday. Uh, and he ain't come back. Uh, I ain't playing games no more. Uh, this is serious. Uh, I'm at the end of my rope. Uh, hey man, I'm standing right on the edge. Uh, you go ask that man, Jesus, uh, if he's the one. Uh, if he's the Messiah. Uh, if he's the Christ. Uh, if he really is God manifest in the flesh. Uh, because if I'm going to lay down my life. Uh, if I'm going to stretch my neck over that chopping block. Uh, he better be the one. Uh, he better be God. He better have eternal life in his hands. They went and found Jesus. They went and found Jesus and they told him, Jesus, your cousin sent us. He's in Herod's prison and it doesn't look good. And he wants to know I mean, don't get mad, Jesus, but he's in a tough spot. Death angel standing right next to him. He wants to know, are you really God? I mean, no, no messing around about it. No playing games. Are you really God? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John. Again, those things which you do hear and see. Amen. And I believe that because Jesus said, go and show John. Again, those things which you do hear and see in the present tense. I believe that when he said the blind received their sight. Uh, he walked over to a blind man standing there and he touched his eyes uh, and that blind man opened his eyes uh, and he could see again uh, right there in front of those two disciples of John uh, amen he said uh, the lame walk uh, and I believe he walked over to a man laying on a mat uh, whose legs were may have been crippled uh, and he grabbed him by the hand and pulled him up uh, and said walk uh, and the man started walking uh, amen uh, I believe uh, when he said the lepers are cleansed. Uh, that there may have been two or three lepers uh, standing off on the side, uh, standing back away from everybody else. Uh, and Jesus walked right up in the midst of them uh, and began to touch them uh, one at a time. Uh, and the leprosy was gone. Uh, I believe uh, that Jesus showed them uh, that the dead are raised again. Uh, he walked over to a man uh, who was dead uh, and pulled him up uh, and said, I said, live. Uh, and the man was alive hallelujah hallelujah you can't transfer this gospel you can't uh, amen spread this gospel unless you believe it uh, amen you got to believe it uh, you ain't never going to believe it uh, unless I believe it uh, if I'm going to transfer this gospel to somebody I got to believe it uh, I got to know in my heart uh, he did open the blind eyes uh, he did unstop the deaf ears uh, he did cleanse the lepers uh, he did raise the dead uh, he is God uh, he is God uh, he is God I believe it. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. As if I was standing that there that day and saw it with my own eyes. I believe it. Hallelujah. And then he said, in verse 6, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Go tell John that. Tell him you saw me open blind eyes. Tell him you saw me unstop deaf ears. Tell him I cleansed lepers. Tell me you even saw me raise a dead man. But tell him this too. The icing on the cake. Tell him not to be offended in me. Why would John want to be offended? Why would John ever have a reason to be offended? Because John's praying. 
every day in that place. John's calling on God every day in that place. His chains are cutting through his skin. Sores are growing on his back. He's developed a cough deep down in his lungs. And he can hear that chopping block going. And he's called on God and he didn't hear God answer. And he called on God again. God, take these chains off my wrist. And he rattled them. They were still there. Can he begin to wonder in his mind? Can he begin to wonder? I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. I wonder if I've told the right one. I wonder if I've said the right things. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. And it began to build offense in him. You get offended at God when God doesn't answer your prayers. You get offended at God when you lose your job. You get offended at God when you're sick, when a child is sick, uh, hey man, when the car breaks down, uh, when all kinds of myriad of tribulations come your way. Uh, hey man, I've seen it a hundred times. Uh, why'd you do that, God? Why'd you let that happen? How come, how come I got to lose my job? Pointing that accusing finger toward heaven. It's all your fault, God. I'm in the way I'm in. It's all your fault, God. Uh, things happen the way they did. Uh, people are always getting offended at God uh, for what God has done. Uh, amen. John was a man uh, of like passions. Amen. Uh, he was uh, similar to you and I. Amen. Just being Jesus' cousin didn't elevate him at all. <laughs> amen. Jesus said, tell him, don't get offended. Amen. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus is omniscient. He knows everything. Amen. He's omnipresent. He's all over the place. Uh, amen. He's omnipotent. Uh, he's all powerful. Uh, Jesus knew where John was. Uh, Jesus knew the gauge of the steel that was wrapped around his hands. Uh, Jesus knew the temperature inside that cell. Uh, Jesus knew uh, the physical condition he was in. Uh, Jesus knew the beginning from the end. Uh, he knew what the end outcome was going to be for John. Uh, and he said, don't tell him. Uh, don't be offended. Uh, don't tell him. Don't get mad at me. Uh, don't tell him. Uh, amen. Uh, don't get mad at God uh, for the situation you're in. Uh, just believe uh, that he is God. Uh, just believe uh, that he knows everything. Uh, just believe uh, he's everywhere all the time. Uh, just believe uh, he's all powerful. Wherever you find yourself, whatever situation you find yourself in, however dark the night, hey man, you need to believe that Jesus is God. And don't get offended at him. Whatever happens. Hey man, don't get offended. Hey man, Stephen was another man that had an opportunity to get offended. Stephen was a young man full of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. Full of the Holy Ghost. Hey man, what's that lead me to believe? He was a praying man. Hey man. He was a praying man. He was a repenting man. Hey man, because he wasn't perfect and he was he's full of Holy Ghost, he's he's repenting. Hey man, like Paul said, I crucify myself daily. Hey Amen. Stephen was praying. Stephen was repenting. Hey man, Stephen was a witnesser. He witnessed and he testified. Hey man, and when some men were needed to fulfill a position in the church, he was one of those that was picked to fulfill that position in the church. Hey man, God had elevated him to that position in the church. Hey man, God lifts him up and God takes him down. Hey man, and Stephen was a man of God. He was a good son of God. He loved God. He served God. And one day he was downtown uh, and he was witnessing and he was testifying and he was having himself a time. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Repent. Get baptized in Jesus' name. You need the Holy Ghost. Uh, and he ran into some people that didn't like his message uh, and they got into an argument there and, and Stephen stood his ground uh, and he told them, God said, uh, except a man be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, Amen. He said, uh, He that believeth uh, and is baptized uh, shall be saved. Uh, hallelujah. He began to preach to those men. Uh, and they got angry. They got mad. Amen. They didn't like his preaching. 
Amen. And I imagine it began to escalate uh, just a little bit. Uh, they began to raise their voices. Uh, they began to get agitated. Uh, and they began to say things. Hey, you better shut up, boy. Yeah. Hey, you better knock that off, boy. You can't preach like that on these streets. Uh, these are Jewish streets. Uh, yeah. Amen. Uh, this is a Jewish city. Uh, amen. Uh, my father's Abraham. Uh, amen. You can't tell me I am saved. Uh, Amen. And, and Stephen, uh, he just kept telling them. He just kept telling them. He just kept telling them. Amen. And when they began, when they began to verbally attack him, he had an opportunity to right then and there to weigh his options. I can continue saying what I'm saying and believing what I'm believing. And these guys are going to be mad at me and hate me forever. Or I can just shut up right now. Amen. Amen. But it was like fire shut up in his bones. Amen. It didn't matter like Jeremiah. They beat him. They put him in stocks. Uh, amen. Jeremiah said, God, as soon as I started witnessing for you, all this trouble started. I ain't going to say nothing no more. Hey, I'm not going to witness for you no more. And then Jeremiah said, it's like shh, fire shut up in my bones. Uh, I couldn't keep quiet. Uh, hey, I had to open my mouth. Uh, Stephen was the same way. Uh, he had to say something else. Uh, in Jesus' name it says. Uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. He's the Messiah. He's God manifest in the flesh. Uh, It escalated. It wasn't verbal anymore. They started coming after him. Hey Amen. They started grabbing onto him and wrestling with him. And the Bible says gnawing on him with their teeth. And they started telling him, you better shut up. We'll take care of you. He had his opportunity. He could have stopped. Uh, he could have quit. Uh, he could have gave up. Uh, amen. Uh, but he didn't. Uh, I believe he kept on witnessing. He kept on telling them, uh, hey, you got to repent. Uh, you got to get baptized in Jesus' name. When they lifted him off his feet uh, and they started carrying him down the street, uh, he could have said, okay, I'm sorry. I, I went too far. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I quit. Uh, I won't say that no more. But he didn't. Uh, he just kept on telling them, yeah, yeah you got to get baptized in Jesus' name. That's the only way you're going to make it. Took him outside the city gates and set him out there on the field of stoning. He knew where he was. Hey Amen. It stopped this all right now or die. That's right. He was on the edge. He'd taken it that far. He had a faith to live by. But now he's standing on that invisible line. Hey Amen. You can have a faith to live by. But do you got a faith that you can die by? Hey Amen. Have you got a faith that you're willing to die for? Hey Amen. And no doubt they all begin to lay their coats down at Saul's feet. And he watched the men as they laid their coats down and they lined up around him. He watched them as they began to heft those rocks. And he knew that it was now or never. Hey Amen. He's going to seal his fate with his next few words. Uh, hey Amen. And they began, uh, hey Amen, to hold back. I believe they were all watching him. What are you going to do now? Now we got you right where we want you. Hey Amen. Uh, now how much faith you got, Stephen? Uh, now what you going to say, Stephen? Uh, now what you going to do, Stephen? Uh, hey Amen. Uh, the Bible says uh, he looked up to heaven uh, and the heavens parted. Uh, and he saw Jesus uh, standing there. Uh, hey Amen. Uh, he saw Jesus. Uh, and he said, uh, Jesus, uh, in thy hands, uh, I commit my spirit uh, because you're God. Uh, he's God. Uh, Jesus is God. <laughs> Living for God's one thing. Hey Amen. Uh, living for God is one thing. Uh, and I know that living for God is hard. Uh, and I know it's tough. Uh, and I know we fight this carnal nature tooth and nail. Uh, and I know we fight worldliness. Uh, amen. And I know we fight devils. Uh, and we fight false doctrine and doctrines of devils. Uh, hey amen. Uh, but living for God is one thing. Uh, being willing to die for God is another. And I'm not talking crazy. Amen. Just 
bear with me for a few minutes. Amen. Herod arrested Peter and James. They were both locked up. Amen. James was in a cell. And James was praying. Amen. He was praying, God, get me out of here. God, I don't like this. I don't like the looks of this. When I walked in, the executioner was filing away on that axe and he was looking right at me. I got your number, boy. Right here. God, where you at? You better believe it. James didn't come out of that one alive. Sometime during the day or night, I don't know, they came to get him. James, let's go. He walked with them down to the chopping block. The Bible's silent on what took place, on what happened, what all was said. Amen. But I believe James was witnessing every step of the way. I believe he was telling them, fellas, I know you don't believe this, but Jesus is God. I want you to know I serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I want you to know, amen, He could get me out of here if He wanted to. Amen, but if He chooses not to, then I'll just step out of this world and into the next one and shake His hand. Hallelujah. Living for God is one thing. Amen, but time and time again, the people of God were called upon to prove more than just living for God, but to prove that they were willing to die for God. The Bible asks that the servant is greater than his Lord. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, it says that Jesus was obedient unto the cross. Amen. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. Come down, born of the Virgin Mary. Amen. Lived on this earth, walked and talked. Amen. Healed people, did all these great works. Uh, but one day they came for Him. When they, they came for the Lord. They came for Jesus in the garden. Amen. Uh, and He was standing there in the garden when they came. Uh, they were coming with torches uh, and swords uh, and spears. Uh, there was a great multitude of them. He saw them coming. He heard them coming. He could have ran off in the darkness, uh, but He was waiting at the gate to the garden uh, when they got there. And they said, Which one of you is Jesus? Uh, he said, That's me. Over here, fellas. No mistake, nobody else. You're looking for me. He was obedient to the cross. They took him, hey man, to the high priest, uh, and they smote him, uh, and they accused him, uh, and they found him guilty. They took him to Pilate's house, uh, hey man, uh, they beat him some more, uh, hey man, they took him to Herod and back to Pilate. Uh, he was beaten and spit upon, uh, he was abused and put a crown of thorns uh, on his head. Uh, they whipped his back, uh, hey man, and tell it was a bloody mess. Uh, they put that cross on him, uh, and they led him to Golgotha, to Calvary, to a place to die. At any moment in time, Jesus could have said, That's enough! I'm done! I'm not playing this game anymore! You're not going to do that to me! At any time, uh, he could have rose up into the air. He could have revealed myriads of angels in the heavens, uh, ten thousands of them. Uh, they could have wiped out all of those Romans. Uh, amen! Uh, but he was obedient unto the cross! And the Bible asks, Are we... Are the servants greater than the Lord? Jesus said, if they do this to me, what do you think they're going to do to you? Amen. If they've done this to me, what do you think they're going to do to you? Now I'm talking to you here today. In this place. And, and I know there's not a lot of trials and tribulations like they saw in the Old Testament. I know that we're not faced... Amen with some of the things that they were faced with. And we can praise God for that. I know that the church here in the United States is not faced with some of the trials and tribulations that they're faced with in South America and in Africa and Russia and in China today. Amen. If you could see the church as a whole, you would see a persecuted church. 
All you can see is a small percentage of people here in the United States uh, that enjoy the freedoms, uh, amen, that God instituted through men uh, in this country, through the, through the Constitution, freedom of speech and freedom of press uh, and freedom of religion, uh, amen. Uh, and we enjoy those freedoms, uh, and you ought to thank God for those freedoms, uh, amen. Uh, but I want you to know, uh, amen, that I am of the opinion uh, that those things may not always be the way they've been uh, for the last 200 years. Uh, amen. Uh, I'm of the opinion uh, that it just may be uh, that things are changing in the world. Uh, amen. Uh, that things are happening uh, in the world uh, that are bringing us ever closer to that last day. Uh, amen. Uh, I believe uh, that the Antichrist uh, is probably in the world uh, as I speak. Uh, and he's pulling all the strings uh, together for his final act. Amen. And it's just my contention here today that we might not always enjoy freedom of the press. We might not always enjoy freedom of speech. We might not always enjoy freedom of religion like we are today. And things can change so fast. Things can change on a global level so fast. Amen. In Matthew chapter 24, it says, And Jesus went out, 24 and verse 1, and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the mount of all his disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine, and pestilence, uh, and earthquakes uh, in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, then, everybody say then. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey man, Jesus let those men know there that day. Uh, hey man, I believe that He prefaced this, uh, that He separated this uh, into three different parts, uh, and He let them know Jerusalem's going to be destroyed, uh, and He let them know that there's going to be a coming a time in the last day. Uh, hey man, when things uh, are going to get turned upside down, uh, there's coming a time uh, in the last days uh, when there's going uh, to be famine, uh, and there's going to be earthquakes, uh, and there's going to be warfare. Uh, amen. Uh, and you're going to be delivered up. Uh, amen. Uh, and you're going to be afflicted. Uh, and you're going to be killed. Uh, amen. And he said, for my name's sake. I believe he was talking to the church. I believe he was talking to the church. Amen. In verse 21, Matthew chapter 24. And verse 21, it says, For then shall be great tribulation. Great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. I'm going to say I'm the elect. No flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Amen. It's, 
It's my contention, amen, to try to get it into somebody's heart here today. Amen. That if uh, we do go through the great tribulation, it's going to have to be more than just living for God. It's going to have to be more than just a confession of faith. Uh, it's going to have to be more than, yes, Jesus, I believe. Uh, Amen. But you are going to have to be committed. You are going to have to be consecrated. Amen. You are going to have to be separated. Amen. I believe that there could come a day and a time. Amen. When they're going to quit playing games. And the kid gloves are going to come off. And we're going to find out. Not if you're willing to live for God. Amen. But if you're willing to cross that line. And believe in Him completely. Stephen had to cross that line. Peter had to cross that line. Jesus Himself crossed that line. Many of the apostles, many of the men and sisters in the church throughout the ages have found themselves in a similar situation. Amen. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 5 says, If thou be wearied by the footman, what shall you do? Amen. When the horsemen arrive. What are you going to do when things escalate? What are you going to do? Amen. When laws begin to change on the books, uh, amen, on uh, a national level, on an international level. What are you going to do, amen, uh, when things start tightening down? What are you going to do, uh, amen, when the persecution fires uh, are lit? Uh, what are you going to do when the Antichrist takes his seat, uh, amen, uh, and you see the abomination of desolation? Uh, what are you going to do uh, if they begin to pass out uh, biochips uh, or however they want to do that, uh, amen? Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, are you going to just say, oh yes, uh, I love God, oh sure, I want to go to church, oh yeah, this and oh yeah, that? What are you going to do, uh, amen, when you find yourself uh, standing before the top and block? Uh, and the executioner is standing beside you. You gotta have a faith to die by. You gotta have a faith to die by. Hey man, I'm not just in this for a season. I'm not just in this, hey man, for popularity. I'm not just in this uh, for position. Hey Amen. I'm in this to the very end. If I become the most unpopular preacher in Oregon, I'll still preach this message. Hey Amen. If they decide not to preach me anywhere else outside of my own church, uh, I'll just have to keep preaching it. Hey Amen. If, if, if everybody in my church quits paying tithe, I'll just keep preaching it. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. I didn't get in this for anybody but God and I'm not leaving for anybody but God. Uh, <laughs> Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was there found place any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world and was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and I looked and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death Satan was cast down. And he knew he had but a short time. 
and he began, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Baptism in Jesus' name. The washing away of their sins. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Amen. They're going to love God and serve God even if they have to die for it. The church is. That's what the church is going to do. In verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. They keep the commandments of God. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, infilling of the Holy Ghost, one God. Amen. The dragon was wroth, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's my contention that the dragon is fighting against the church. The dragon's kicked out of heaven. He lands on earth with a thump. He gets up fighting mad. And he looks around and sees the woman. And he's mad. And he goes after the woman. He goes after the bride. Amen. He goes after the bride of Christ to persecute and to make war with. Amen. And he does make war with them. In Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 it says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Those whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience of here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The patience and the faith of the saints is the knowledge. Amen. That he may come. He may rise in power. He may be in charge of all the kingdoms of the world. And he may make war with the saints. Amen. And they might come after me. And they might put me in a dark cell. And they might put chains on my wrists. Amen. And they might lead me out to a chopping block one day. Amen. But the patience and the faith of the saints is devil. You might get me now, but my God is going to get you later. You might separate my head from my shoulders, but my God is going to cast you in a lake of fire that burns forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night uh, who worship the beast uh, and his image uh, and whosoever receiveth a mark uh, of his name and the next verse says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus and the faith uh, of Jesus uh, I'm telling you that you ain't getting saved no other way but by believing in Jesus repenting getting baptized in Jesus name and getting filled with the Holy Ghost even clear up in Revelation chapter 14 in verse 13 it says that I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me write uh, 
Blessed are the dead uh, which die in the Lord from his forth. Uh, yea, saith the Spirit, uh, that they may rest uh, from their labors uh, and their works. Uh, do follow them. Uh, the patience uh, of the saints uh, is the knowledge uh, that God uh, is just. Uh, and God uh, is going to see to it uh, that justice uh, is meted out. Uh, whatever the devil does uh, to the church, uh, God uh, is going to make Make sure he pays. I mean, you mess with one of these brothers' wives and you just see what happens. Amen. The devil's messing with the bride of Christ. Amen. And and don't think for a minute, amen, that the devil can't touch the bride. Because he already touched Stephen. And he already touched Peter. Amen. And he already touched Christ himself. Amen. He already got a couple licks in. Amen. People say, oh, we can't go through the tribulation because God won't let His bride go through that. You better take a look at the bride through the ages. You better take a look at the bride around the world. Amen. And it doesn't look good. And it doesn't sound good. Amen. But the patience of the saints is I'm going to heaven and the devil's going to get his. I'm going to heaven and the devil's going to get his. I'm going to heaven and the devil's going to get his. Hallelujah. 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 I'm living for God. And if it comes to it, I'll die for him. I'm living for God. And if I have to, if it comes to that, then I'll die for him. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I didn't bring a watch with me. So I'm going to try to wrap this up. Amen. Old chief was quoted as saying it's a good day to die it's a good day to die amen and if you're walking with God and you're full of the Holy Ghost amen it's a good day to die any day you're walking with God is a good day to die and if dying scares you you need a closer walk with God the Antichrist scares you. You need a closer walk with God. The talk of tribulation scares you. You need a closer walk with God. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15.55 says, O death, where is thy sting? Amen. O death, where is thy sting? I'm not afraid of your death. Amen. The Bible says that Christ tasted death for us. You know what that means? I don't have to taste it. I don't know what taste, death tastes like, but it must be a bitter pill. Amen. But Jesus tasted it for me. And when I leave this world, but whatever form or fashion, if I leave uh, from sickness, I'll die for Christ. If I leave in an automobile accident, I'll die for Christ. Uh, hey man, if they put me in a jail cell and take me to a chopping block, I'll die for Christ. Uh, hey man, but the minute I step from this world uh, into the next one, uh, hey man, I won't feel the sting. Uh, I won't taste a bitter pill. Uh, hey man, uh, I'll just make a smooth transition. Uh, hey man, I'll step from this life to the next one. Uh, hey man, I look back and say, oh, that was easy. Oh, that was a piece of cake. Uh, hey man, I don't know what I was sweating for. Uh, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, uh, though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Uh, amen. Uh, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I'm not afraid. Uh, I'm not afraid. Uh, I'm going to live for him. Uh, and if I have to, I'll die for him. Uh, I'm living for God. And I don't know how I'm going to leave this world. I don't know how. But I know when I do, it'll be for God. Let's all stand here today.
Hallelujah. 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 Friend, listen to me here today. You've got to be willing to, more than just willing to live for Him. More than just willing to dress right and talk right and act right. Uh, amen. And I believe in holiness. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. But all the holiness in the world is going to get you to heaven. Amen. If you get to that place in life and you falter. If you're staring the death angel right in the face and you back down. Amen. John the Baptist was staring the death angel in the face. He sent his disciples out and asked, Are you the one? And Jesus sent them back and told them, He's the one. It wasn't but a short time after that that they came to John the Baptist's cell. It seems that Herod and his their begotten wife and their daughter were having a party and Herod's da- uh, daughter had danced and, and the king told her, you can have anything you want, half of my kingdom. But she'd already been instructed by a mother who was offended at the preacher's preaching. And she said, tell your daddy I want John the Baptist's head on a charger, on a silver platter. And she told him, Daddy, kill that preacher downstairs. And I'll be happy. The Bible says that Herod didn't want to do that. He was sad. But he sent the orders down, and the orders came down to the dungeon. And the guards came to John's door. And they said, It's time. And I believe he, that he stood up without fear or favor. That I'm ready. This is it. I'm ready. I know who the Christ is. I know Jesus is God. I got it settled right here. I believe he walked down to that chopping block with his head held high. I believe he may have been witnessing to them right down to the last few seconds and imploring them. Jesus really is God. You can take my head off my shoulders, but you can't take God off the throne. He's God. He was willing to die for God. Amen. We need to have that kind of conversion in our hearts that John had in that cell. Amen. If I was ever wondering, if I ever questioned, if I ever doubted, because of the pain, because of the suffering, because of sickness, because of financial problems, if I ever doubted, I don't doubt anymore. I've got a firm conviction in my heart. Jesus is God. And I am going to serve Him and live for Him wherever it leads. I think it would be a good idea if we find a place to pray for a few minutes. Amen. If you just want to kneel in your seat, that's fine. Well, let's talk to the Lord for a few minutes, amen, and ask the Lord, God, give me, give me that kind of a conviction in my heart. God, give me that kind of a conviction in my heart. God, put that kind of faith down inside of me. Amen. I want to 